I want to share something with you today. Because this is good news. Oftentimes when we teach on the word delay, I get to look at you today. We teach as if it's a negative content. We teach as if the enemy is the only one that brings delay. And I got to give it with an attitude because I'm tired of the mindset that hinders the Lord's work in us. That hinders the shifting of our minds in us. And God wants to shift our minds to a realm of understanding so that we may carry wisdom to know what he is doing. He is doing something, as always, always doing or already done something. Because we're walking in his past. It's our future, his past. What was it at? 6920? 69. All right. So I open up the Bible. I'm getting ready to do the affirmation. And I open up the word and I go to Micaiah. Not that it was one of my word affirmations, but when I opened it up, it got my attention. And usually that's how God gets my attention. I don't play Russian roulette with the Bible. I open it and I just look down and I happen to see that he has a word for me. My God, he has a word for me. If God is ever going to speak to you, he's going to speak to you through his word because it's alive. It's living. It's a double edged sword. And it's the only way to cut through your flesh. It's the only way to cut through the bones. It's the only way to get through that marrow. And it's the only way to pierce your soul. So when you're going through something, when your life is taking turns, when your life is, has circumstances, when life is going up and it's coming down and it's going back around, whatever it is that, the, that life is funneling, God has a word. God has a word. He will never leave you wordless. The difference of getting the word is positioning yourself to say, I don't know. I have no clue of what to do. Like David, when he gets before the father, God, I have nothing. You anointed me as king. I am positioned on a realm in a royal priestly uh, uh, anointed king sitting over a nation. And I, God, am nothing. When you come like that, I promise you, you'll get a supernatural word. You will receive a prophetic word for your now. God is not a man. He is spirit. And he knows what your spirit needs when you are in need of it. I am on fire when I feel that God is pressing in and getting ready to give you fresh oil. Pressing in and he's getting ready to release you from something. He's pressing in. He's getting ready to unlock some things for you. And in the midst of all of that, we like to call it a delay. I got a, I was going to say I got a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> I got a witness. Amen. I got a witness. I can get to have church because where two are gathered in his midst, that is his church. Now, I open up Micaiah and I look down and it says, a remnant shall be delivered. And I said, well, I guess you got my attention because I want to know about this deliverance God because in the middle of when you're feeling a looping cycle of delay you are looking for your deliverance so that already had my attention then I looked down then then the remnant of Jacob now I'm going to tell you this is this is scholar work scholar work is it this part of scholar is a prophecy for Israel about the times of tribulation okay so 
yes, in the biblical order, if we're going to read it right, this is a prophecy fulfillment that will happen at the time of tribulation. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. Mm -mm -mm. Like a dew from the Lord. Like showers on the grass. Which delay not for a man. Which delay not for a man. Nor wait for the children of man. Okay. So I said, what? Are you okay? There's okay. Because you spoke to me earlier about delay. You said, don't let delay come in as a negative force and put you in an empty cycle that only you can put yourself into. Do not let the word delay come in and begin to sprue up doubt and unbelief that I'm not the God who works in miracles, that I am not your God who redeems your time. Tell that delay that not today, that you're not here to receive it. You're here to declare the works of the mighty Lord and the promises that he's already given you and the time that he's planned to redeem and everything that was lost and stolen he is here to give it to us in a double measure because the Lord does not forsaken the righteous the Lord does not forsaken the righteous it's a promise he will, if you are righteous if you are found in the righteousness of his son you will not be forsaken and he means it and so Holy Spirit began to say don't receive that Begin to take that thing, prophesy to it, declare it, cast it down. And I'm like, yeah, I'm crying, crying. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not receiving that. I'm not receiving that. I'm not receiving that doubt. I'm not receiving that discouragement because that's a lie. And I, I didn't, I just did what the Holy Spirit told me. Did I have full meaning? No, but God will give you understanding. And that is to increase your wisdom. All of us want to have wisdom, but you can't have wisdom without having fear of the Lord. When the fear of the Lord is in your heart, you are going to walk in wisdom. And God is going to increase the measures of your wisdom. So here he comes and he says, Micaiah chapter five, seven is for you. And it's for anybody else who's in a delay. Who's, who thinks that they're sitting in an empty looping um, cycle. I need you to prophesy. I said, okay, Lord, show us what delay means. In this scripture, I love this. In this scripture, I could eat this up. I could, Lord. Ah, oh, okay. The root meaning that of twisting and winding a strand of cord or rope. But it is uncertain how the root meaning relates to the idea of hope. So they can't even fathom in a mind's mind. See, because you can't do this in a carnal mind. So the person who was writing out the dictionary said, there's no way, no one's, no one's been able to say how hope is connected to delay. The Bible has quite a lot to say about hope. The interesting part is that hope comes in all shapes and sizes, meaning that it comes in many different perspectives. Psalm 69, 20. Read it. Psalm 69 starts with David talking about a sin, sinful nation and how the people are sinning. Well, hope of someone can remain unfulfilled, especially when a person or a nation is sinning. So we're not talking about that. We're not talking about living in death and wondering why you haven't, you haven't received the promise. I'm not talking about being marked by darkness and wondering why you can't see light. This delay, it doesn't even, it, do, it says that the Bible's hope is the foundation of faith. The Bible's hope is the foundation of faith. The word hope in English often portrays itself like doubt. Ah, 
It often portrays itself like doubt. When someone talks about delay, they've done this for years. They say, well, you're delayed. Don't worry. Listen, you, you're, you're, you're giving the wrong perception. The kingdom doesn't say that delay is doubt. It says, for instance, someone might say, I hope it will not rain tomorrow. That's not the hope we're looking for. There's some doubt in that. Okay, then it says that if somebody asks you if you're going to heaven, they say, well, I hope so. That's doubt. So people are using hope, entwining it with doubt. Hope and doubt aren't even friends. Hope is based on faith. And when your hope is connected to doubt, you have a faith problem. Okay. So when we look at the word delay... Okay, I love this. I love this. I love when God breaks through. I love it. Hope is a reality and not a feeling. That's another one. Oh, hope deferred makes the heart sick because you allowed the feeling to take over. You didn't base, you, you took whatever was coming over you and you fed it to doubt. You did not stand on faith. How do you stand on faith? You take, throw back, use your shield of faith. Use the helmet of salvation. Put on the belt of truth. Put on the righteousness. And use it for crying out loud so that our minds can shift like Christ. I say this with excitement. Because there's nothing greater in life than breakthrough. Everybody's waiting for a breakthrough that's going to miraculously change all of me. And that's not how it works. See, breakthrough comes in increments because it's got to come down and break down the bricks in your life. Everybody's a living stone. Imagine how many stones are found in you that are not even the established stones in Christ. So imagine when God comes for a breakthrough, he comes, break, he comes to break down one stone. One stone. Oh One. But there's many. There's many living stones in you. So look at this. Hope or confidence is the assurance that we trust in his word. Hope and confidence. Hope or confidence is the assurance of the trust of his word. I needed a word. Apparently, I didn't know I needed a word. But my, my spirit that's connected to the Holy Spirit understood that Iris needed a word. Not because there was doubt, but because God desires for me to reign in wisdom. God desires for me to reign in understanding. He has to know that it's not about knowledge, but it's about the becoming transformation of who he is. And when I opened up the word to Micaiah, I opened it up and I said, wait a minute here. God is speaking. I stopped everything in the room. I began to say, listen, God is speaking. And when we began to look at this, it was, it was evidence that what the word was saying. Here's what the word says for this particular scripture. I love it. You can't help but to be in the fire when you're ignited with it. You just can't. Once you hit the altar, it's done. The room in remaining, rem, the root meaning, okay, that I told you was uncertain, how it is the root of delay is hope. <laughs> The word here in Micaiah 5, 7, the word is used to signify, listen to me, to signify, to signify. Can you look up the word signify? Signify depending on ordering activities around your future event. Listen, can I get a witness? Do you hear what I'm saying? See, in order for there to be a delay, you have to have a vision. In order to be a delay, you have to have a vision from God. You cannot know what's in delay if you don't have a vision. Ah, uh, you have to know that there is something in the waiting from a vision.
What's the word signify? To be an indication of. Uh huh. It says. An indication of. Let's go back. An indication of. The word is used to indicate. Bing, bing, bing. Someone sound a shofar to indicate. A sound of a shofar is an indicator. It's indicating. How do you know what the shofar is indicating? There's four different sounds to a shofar when it's blown. And anybody who is in covenant and knows about a shofar, they're going to know that there's four different sounds. And what I want to indicate is the sound I'm going to release. Wow. So if I indicate the war cry of a shofar... I will throw it out. If I need to indicate victory, it's a different sound. If I need to declare, uh, de um, if I need to blow, uh, the, you know, it's time for to prepare for battle. It's a different sound. There's four different sounds to a shofar. It's not just boo 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 boo. Everybody does one sound. And to be honest with you, the sound that they use is victory. But you don't know the sound of war. Wow. So when the shofar's blown. You keep blowing out victory when we should be warning people about the war we're in. Then you wonder why there's slaughter. So, Micaiah 5-7. I love it. I, I just... I, I just... I just can't... You know, only God can do this. Only God can do this. Only God can release himself to help you I, it's you don't understand that wisdom is more better than gold and rubies and money in the world i could get things with wisdom that money could never get me i could get positions with wisdom that money will never give me i can get a high and paying job because of the wisdom i carry that i could never get without it wisdom is the is the leading indicator look at this the word is used to signify depending the word is used to indicate to depend on and while you're depending on me <laughs> start ordering your activities around that future event while you're depending on me, start ordering that activities around this future event. While you depend on me, start making a preparation for what you already saw. While you're depending on me, get ready to establish yourself in that position for the future event. While you're depending on me. See, Come on. the delay. Ah, oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. The delay, my God. The delay is found in the Lord. Yeah, the devil might come and trip you up. He might throw a dagger here and there. But do you know that God takes all bad things for the good of his glory? Do you know that that trip up, that obstacle, he already took it to make it for himself? So the delay, uh, let me tell you. I. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. You're lucky I'm in the car because I'd have been outside <laughs> running, 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 running. Because mm, before mm. we started seven, we went to verse seven. They begin to declare a birth of a king in Bethlehem. They began to prophesy Jesus' existence. <laughs> Read it. Now gather yourself in troops. O daughter of troops, O daughter of troops, a state of siege has been placed against you. Ah, oh, oh gosh. They shall strike the ruler of Israel on the cheek with the rod, a scepter. But as for you, Bethlehem, too little to be among the clans of Judah, for one shall come forth for me who is to be ruler of Israel. He's going forth. Appearance. Are, for, are from long ago. 
from ancient of days. Listen to what I just said. Listen to what I just said. Listen to what I just said. God, break the yoke. Love you. Bye. Love you. Um, that's my little brother. I love him. I really do. <sighs> Listen to what I'm telling you. They prophesied that Jesus was coming. And they said, hey, little clan, you were too little to be amongst Judah. But from you will come someone. He's going to be the ruler of Israel. He's going forth in appearance. Are from long ago. Jesus' appearance was from long ago. My God, he was from ancient days. <laughs> you don't know about this Jesus. I'm getting ready to release the ruler of Israel. The one who will be hit with the scepter. Why? Why with a scepter? Why with the scepter was he going to be hit in the cheek? Because he was king. Because he was king. Ha. So therefore, he will give them up to the time. When she who is to labor has given birth to a child. Then what is left from his kingsmen shall return to the children of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd and guide his flock in the strength of the Lord. In the almighty name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell in secure undisturbed peace. My God. Because at that time, he shall be great, extending his authority, even to the ends of the earth. You, he's extended. Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your king? That you, he has extended his scepter, so you have his authority. <laughs> Woo! I wish we could break the bar on religion. Yeah. I wish that we could crack the back and the neck on religion if we as the children of God can raise up and know that the Bible is not about religion the Bible is telling you who you are and what you are capable of doing and how it's going to delay you if you allow the enemy to snare you uh, this is an army we know strategies of war we watch our backward civilians who do not entangle with civilian affairs. We have to understand what the Lord is trying to teach us. You're not just a simpleton. You're not just somebody grown or was born and that was it. No, no. You have abilities. You have gifts, supernatural gifts and get over it. You can see in the spirit. You can hear it in the spirit. You can feel that things are happening around you, whether it's good. Christ. It is the extended authority of Jesus Christ. My God. It's his extended authority. There is a king that has come to extend his authority to you. He said, here, I leave you now. Go all to the world with this authority. <laughs> Joyce's face is so priceless right now. And I got front row. <laughs> Oh, Lord, please help us. Help our minds to shift, God. Help our minds to shift. Help our nation to shift. Help our nations to shift, God. Okay? So the only way that this nation will fall into a state of despair, a lack of hope, my God, even the Christians, is because you are allowing to us the sin of the world to contaminate your home. Mm. My God, save us. You can't allow the sins of the world to take your hope because if it corrupts your hope, it corrupts your faith. If it corrupts your faith, it corrupts my belief. And your shields are down. If you and my shields are down, and my belief is fighting for what I know is true, and then I become like the rivers next to Babylon, it's full of grief and sorrow, losing my song. Wow. Ah, oh, Lord. Okay, I'm about to deliver myself. I'm feeling real ready to vomit. So now we have, woo! Now we have verse seven. 
I love this. Oh my God, am I on the right page? I'm so gone. <laughs> Woo! See this right here. This is called. This is revival. This is. This is. This is. This can happen anywhere. Just one moment of God. One word from God can bring you back to life. If you just come like King David and say, I don't know nothing, but I do know this, that I've been appointed and anointed to be in position by you. That's all I know. And when King David came before the father and he laid himself down in 69, he said, I don't know nothing. I know that these enemies are wild. I know these people, they're after me. They're talking all these things about me. But my God, you Lord, I praise. You God, I give the glory. You God, are almighty. Sometimes you are going to have to get past all the sins of the world. So that God can re-show you what mercy looks like. I can't tell you right now how much of a need the body is in to, for me to tell you if you don't wake up from your slumber you're going to fall asleep in their sin it's a it's a problem god's crying out they're sinning the nation is gone bonkers our children are out of control in rebellion but god you you are mighty and you know all these things and somebody has to stand before the king with their authority of royalty on to be able to understand that my time of prayer with the Lord, that me coming before him, it's not because I'm, I'm the all-knowing or because I am something. It's because without you, I am nothing. You must die in carnality. To come into the spirit of God and understanding. When you come in, you know, that's that's David's story. That's his life. I, I've been reflecting on David and all I see is how many times they wanted to kill him. How many times they wanted to, to, to just be away with him. Take him out of what God anointed him for. You know, David never usurped leadership. He waited for Saul's position to die out. He could have took it. He was already anointed. But he was honoring him. He honored him even after the crucifying parts of Saul against him. Where's our hearts? Why do we faint in the work of God? Why do we faint in the gospel? Why? Because... You've got twisting of doubt and hope embedded in your faith. God wants to remove it. He wants you to throw it up. He wants it out. He wants deliverance from the, from the, the remnants of the enemy. Everybody's weary from war. But everybody goes home remembering who they are. They don't forget what happened, but they have to go home to remember who they are. They still go back to war. When they're called back, they're called back to war. They don't never stop fighting because they have purpose, because they have hope and they have a faith that a nation can be saved. Micaiah, God is going to, I am telling you, if we just burn, if we start to burn and we come back to, to the desk, I'm not even going to say desperation, the hunger for God's presence in your life again, for the hunger to just open up the word and have breakthrough. My God, people run. From, from gathering to gathering to gathering to get a breakthrough. And it could be just as simple as you opening up your word and shutting your mouth and clearing your mind and saying, God, I have nothing. What I have is a broken hallelujah. Can you take my broken hallelujah, God? I'm still here ready to praise. Despite of everything I'm going through, God, I'm here to praise. I know who you are. My circumstances, my life, 
it doesn't change you, God. You're still on your throne. You're still loving. You're still full of mercy. You're still full of all your attributes, God. It doesn't change. It, that's the most... Like, how can you not when he's the only one that doesn't change? Everything changes around you. And he's the only one that doesn't. We want a people that change like him. Not, a, not constantly changing in themselves. People are always trying to change themselves. Change them for a better them. Why don't we want to change for a better him? So Micaiah, I love this. I love this. I got the amplified version out. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be among many people like a dew from the Lord. Like showers on the grass, a source of blessing. The showers on the glasses, grass is a source of blessing. Which could come suddenly and not wait for man. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Oh my God, Lord, just, just please heal those things that need to be healed in us. Anything that's hindering that truth. It says... It can come suddenly and it doesn't wait for a man. Nor is it going to be delayed by the sons of man. There was another another section session uh, session section here. Oh my God, Lord Jesus! I, I'm telling you, uh, if I if I if I had the church open right now, I would lay at the altar. There's nothing more you need to say, God. There's nothing more you need to say, God. You, 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 you took your time to make sure, I'm telling you, you took your time to make sure that everybody in the world, with everybody in the world crying, with everybody in the world in need of something, everybody in the world, my God, they're going through so many things. I hear a story and I think that that's, that's the biggest story I've ever heard. Then I hear another one. I'm like, my God, these people, they are carrying so much pain for so much trauma and abuse in their life. The wonder they can't breathe. And my story is nothing compared to theirs. I haven't been through half the stuff these people go through in the world. And with all of that, he still has his eye on the one he loves. And he comes down in that moment to talk to you. Out of everybody that's struggling and going through something, that's how valuable you are. That God can be here and there and anywhere. That's how precious you are to the Lord. That in that moment, God's like, mm -mm. I've seen what you've gone through in the last two days. I, I know it might not feel like your story doesn't match up to others, but everybody's story, story matches up for me. Everybody's story is just as important. And your story is not any less. I hear you. Even the words you don't speak, I hear you. And here he comes down with, with a scripture and he highlights it and he goes, look at the word delay. And I opened it up and I said, my God, this, this right here. See, delay is something to hope for. A moment to have you prepare for. Delay is a place of hope looking to waiting. But while I wait, I'm preparing. That's what he said. He said, you will move in the activities to prepare for that future event. Imagine if delay in this negative sense of doubt has caused people to faint, has caused people to grow weary because they were battling something. They were battling against God. Did you see what happened to the story with Jacob? When God changed his name and he fought with the angel 
It says that they were fighting so much that they were they were getting tired. And the angel said, enough. Let go of me. And Jacob said, not until you bless me. This will change your mind about delay. See, he was in position, already on a journey, already knowing that there was an assignment for death over his life. When he was walking, we're talking about Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about same person who says that the remnant of Jacob will come from. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what the remnant of Jacob would carry? That warring spirit over angels until you bless me. They don't give up. They stay in the fight. And they will they will fight with an angel until I get my new name. See, that's what we gotta look at. Delay is there for your new name. Delay is there for your new name. Delay is there until you don't give me a new name. Until you don't give me a new name. I won't stop. I won't stop. I'm going to hold on to what I, the blessing, you know. I'm going to know the vision, the vision, the vision, the vision, the vision. What was in the vision? Whatever was in the vision is enough to make you war for it. And at the same time, prepare your journey. And be ready. Because the delay for people is over. Now, what am I saying about that? When I'm saying that now, I'm saying it to break off the enemy's lie. You, you got to understand what God is saying. And I end it with this. You got to understand what God is saying. This moment that I put you on hold... I want you to get yourself ready for what you saw. I'm going to use this moment to give you a new name. And when you come out of here, you will have your new name. And when you arrive, you will arrive as Israel. Daughters of Zion. So... God is good. Holy Spirit, thank you. We're going to pray for anyone who is going to watch this and feel like they have been in delay but not have understood that the delay was not a negative. The delay is God placing hope in your deferment so that you would know that in the moment of this delay, I'm only being on hold because I'm about to get my new name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this. I thank you for the seed that you have planted, my God. Father, we break off every lie that has come over the minds of your people. We bind up that deaf spirit that is following them to the land of good, of honey and milk, of flourishing promise. Father, we thank you for the glory that is in your name. We thank Thank you for the glory that has been placed in us. We thank you for Jesus that is righteous and only through his righteousness we have been found righteous. We thank you God that you answer the prayers of the righteous. So Father we thank you for this hour. That this hour of delay is not a delay of doubt but it is a delay of hope in our faith. It is a delay to look to. It is a delay to wait for for and it's a delay to hope for so father we thank you for that now now being the stamp and the seal in the spirit around god and while we are in this place while we are in this place god uh, while we are in this place we will prepare for what is coming lord we just thank you for the holy spirit holy spirit we honor your presence Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the one who tenderizes our hearts. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the ones who set us on fire. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you keep a garment of praise around us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that when all things are coming at us, you, you, Holy Spirit, bring forth a peace that surpasses all this understanding, misunderstanding, 
because we don't understand. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you make the kingdom come. You make the kingdom come and his will be done in our, our earth, in this temple, as it should be in heaven. And so, Father, we thank you, God. We glorify that you are holy and your name is mighty. Father, we ask that you would give more people hearts like David. That you would give people hearts like David. My God, that you would give people hearts like David. David was so rejected. David was so neglected. David was so overseen. David was even, they disqualified David even before they saw David. But Lord, you saw something in David. You placed something in David. And David remained faithful to that purpose of who you are in him. To remain that the whole Israel, all of Israel would know that the God of Israel is still God. So, Lord, we just thank you for this fine word. I say fine because when we could get seeds, God, and they cannot, they could be generic. And we could get generic, generic plants out of it. We could bear generic fruit, but God, yours is organic. Your seed is organic. There's no need to apply extra, extra things to the seed to make it better. Your seed is already done. All we need to do, God, is continue to nourish it by watering it with your word. And so we thank you, Lord, for that. God, make us like a tree planted in your garden, Lord. Make us like trees planted in your garden that we will be firm and unmovable. Even now, God, with everything that's happening around us, that we will not allow darkness to consume our thoughts, to consume our hearts, to take over our character. No, Lord, we will rise up and we will push back all darkness. We will push back every lie. God, let the word that is being preached from your people be pure be made holy and we would stop confusing the people and actually give the truth of the word God all oh, the enemy might put a hold or a halt but it cannot stop your purpose and it will not stop the promise and as I spoke in tongues I heard I'm giving them their inheritance and so, Father, I thank you that you are releasing in their, in the inheritance to the earth. The inheritance of the earth is the sons and daughters that are rising up in the season. And, Father, I ask that you would bring people alongside and that will bring up the ones who have fallen into being faint and weary. And restore them back into joy and truth. And, Lord, we seal this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.